that we have why digital signage and IP TV is important uh, to engage your customer and your employee. Next. Uh, okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, for triple play, uh, as you can see from the diagram here, uh, we we are using HP server. This is the connectivity diagram that we have. We are actually using HP server on our head end. And if you can see on the left, we have uh, ingest sources. So ingest sources can be from aerial, uh, digital signage, IPTV, and streaming solution. Compared to some other manufacturer, uh, some of them, they just focus on IPTV and they, they couldn't do digital signage. And some of them, they can just do digital signage, but not IPTV. But for us, our solution, Triple Play solution, can actually provide uh, content to digital signage, IPTV, and streaming. So for uh, for digital signage, we can even support uh, displays such as uh, LG and uh, LG WebOS and uh, Samsung Tizen. So with with uh, 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 WebOS and Tizen, you don't even need any media player uh, to be connected to the display. Uh, our our head end server can actually connect to WebOS and Tizen directly and push the digital signage or IPTV content to the to the display. Uh, where else some other uh, some other devices uh, such as uh, Philips or uh, Sony running on Android. We can support all sorts of uh, uh, media players such as uh, Intel, Intel, Intel NUC, BrightSign, uh, or Amino. So we can support all sorts of uh, third-party uh, player. And of course, we have our own uh, player as well uh, to bundle with for digital signage and IPTV. And the good thing about uh, Triple Play and One Land ecosystem, we actually uh, using web browser for configuration and for assessing the content. So uh, with this, um, currently we have a, pro a product manager from Triple Play and OneLan working together to to actually merge uh, two platform into a single GUI and functionality. So hopefully by end of this year, we will have a, a Triple Play and OneLan uh, single GUI and uh, ecosystem. So currently we are still running uh, separately, but we can collaborate together in some of the project. Okay, next. Okay, in uh, next uh, few weeks time, uh, Triple Play actually uh, will launch a cloud-based uh, content management system. The previous slide that you have, uh, you see just now, those are on-premise uh, content management system. Uh, but we are launching a cloud-based uh, CMS, we call it EVP, Enterprise Video Platform. So instead of uh, having the HP server in, in the end client uh, office, so the server will be uh, the server for EVP. The server will be actually uh, hosted in a public uh, public cloud. So uh, we will for for EVP, the model that we will use will be software as service. So we will uh, we will actually sign up package as a, a one year or three to or uh, three years or five years. And uh, the data center that uh, the public data center that we will use currently will be hosted in US. UK and Australia. Of course, uh, we have this uh, option to extend to other region, but it will depend on the demand for this uh, EVP. So as you can see from the diagram here, for EVP solution, uh, for EVP solution, let's say you have um, uh, IPTV in your local office, uh, for for uh, broadcast regulation, you are unable to have a broadcast uh, TV from UK and then go to the cloud and then uh, send the UK TV channel to maybe Asia office. So for uh, IPTV solution, you still can use a local uh, caching uh, solution whereby you subscribe to local TV and integrate with the cloud-based system 
for IPTV and digital signage solution. For but for digital signage, there shouldn't be any problem for you to have your content, digital signage content in HQ in US or UK, and when you change the content, you will push to the cloud and send out to the uh, regional office for uh, changing the content or layout. So uh, EVP system is actually very uh, flexible and secure, even though it's going through public uh, uh, public uh, server, but it will be uh, secure because it's, uh, we are actually using a reputable uh, data center. Okay, next. Okay, so this is a, a one land ecosystem, uh, similar to Triple Play. Uh, Triple Play, the HP server that we have, our software actually uh, uh, program running on Linux. And for li uh, one land, uh, even though it's not running on HP server, but the the CMS hardware that one land has actually run uh, running on Linux as well. And one land actually have our own uh, 4K and HD media player, and similar to uh, Triple Play, One Land CMS can support uh, all sorts of a display. So, uh, like a uh, Samsung, uh, Samsung running on Tizen, uh, LG running on WebOS, we can actually push the content directly without the need of having media player. So, similar to Triple Play, and of course for uh, for other display that don't have uh, this uh, this this uh, SOC, uh, you we can also support uh, third party uh, media players such as BrightSign. And uh, the unique thing about One LAN ecosystem will be Reserva. If you can see on the top right, Reserva is our room booking system. And this room booking system is not like the conventional uh, room booking system. So later Bruno will uh, explain further on on this uh, reserva booking uh, uh, room booking system. So reserva can be used uh, as digital signage as well. So this is a unique advantage of uh, using our uh, solution. So uh, uh, with this, I will end my uh, presentation uh, as an introduction on one land and triple play. So I will hand over to Bruno to cover more on uh, one land product, which is uh, the digital signage portion and reserva. Over to you, Bruno. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, uh, Hall. Um, I from uh, Shanghai, where I'm based right now. And um, I will introduce now a bit more in details the one land digital signage, and uh, next will be the reserva room booking solution. Um, so we have uh, prepared with uh, Jabs um, a presentation in which I have included some uh, hands on um, uh, operation on our um, system, especially the CMS. So we will uh, look uh, into this. So this will cover basically a bit of a brief history of uh, one land. Uh, Jimmy already gave a global history on the group. Uh, then a few cases uh, that we did recently to give a bit an idea of where we can deploy digital signage. Uh, then a bit more um, specific features of one land. Then we will stop for a while on the um, presentation and I will be happy to answer some questions on uh, digital digital signage, and the next uh, session will be a short uh, uh, presentation on the Java Room Booking solution. Then again, we can some uh, some question there. I propose that we can now go and look uh, to, through the presentation. So PowerPoint and will be uh, some, uh, some hands-on demonstration as well. Let's start with a short introduction of the company OneLand. OneLand started in 2000 in UK near London, I focusing on digital signage, which was then a rather new technology. After several years of success on the Unigest, a US company with strong position in hospitality market worldwide. And in 2019, end of last year, Unigest also acquired Triple Play another UK company with excellent yeah. solutions in IPTV and digital signage. This means that the work of partners in more than vertical markets where the jobs. digital <laughs> comes a feature element in the main lobby. It is eye-catching. The content here is a mix of different types. 
with different purposes. Globally, it is a digital platform that is beautifully designed, that is giving useful information, some serious stuff from the administration, but also some more fun content from the social groups among the students. And this is giving an image of a modern, efficient and well-managed university. Content will include communication to the students and visitors, messages from the administration, also communication on events, activities. It will guide telling you where to go. It will also demonstrate the commitment of a university to certain causes and values such as energy saving with a live dial showing the energy generated by solar panels within the campus. Another type of content can look much more simple, like a large video wall in this airport in New Zealand. The purpose here is to create a high quality and impressive video wall that becomes the focus of the architectural design of a place. This video wall consists of three parts, each of 17 display, so in a total 51 displays. The purpose here is to create a high digital signage covers quite quite a wide range of applications. So let's start by looking at some examples. Here is a case of a university. You got a large screen that becomes a feature element in the main lobby. It is eye-catching. Okay, otherwise maybe I can the play the video is a from mix of different uh, types. here. Can you see on your side? Can you see now? Covers quite a wide range of applications. Wide range of applications. So let's start by looking at some examples. Here is a case of a university. You got a large screen that becomes a feature element in the main lobby. It is eye-catching. The content here is a mix of different types with different purposes. Globally, it is 
a digital platform that is purely fully designed, that is giving useful information, some serious stuff from the administration, but also some more fun content from the social groups among the students. And this is giving an image of a modern, efficient and well-managed university. Content will include communication to the students and visitors, messages from the administration, also communication on events, activities. It will guide people coming to the university with a summary of the event of the day and wayfinders telling you where to go. It will also demonstrate the commitment of the university to certain causes and values such as energy saving with a live dial showing the energy generated by solar panels within the campus. Another type of content can look much more simple, like a large video wall in this airport in New Zealand. The purpose here is to create a high quality and impressive video wall that becomes the focus of the architectural Should design. Should I show the video space. on my side? Do you think this would be... This video wall... You would be able to get it on... Okay, let's, so just now I try, I just don't know whether you can uh, get it. Maybe you just uh, confirm to me that this is running uh, correct. Okay, so shall we go? Sorry for the delay. So we, we go now. You don't have a song? Okay. Uh, so, yep. Okay. So I will, uh, I will go ahead. So what? Okay. So hold on. I just need to close here then. So one land is a UK company established in 2000 and started uh, on the digital signage um, and started in the UK business and later in 2008 started to develop on the export. Uh, they have been recognized with some uh, Queen Award, which are very important in UK, right? Um, and later in uh, 2015 started uh, with a reserve of a room uh, solution uh, for uh, room booking, we will see that later. As uh, Jimmy just explained, uh, Uniguest acquired um, one land back in 2018, uh, about two years ago now, and more recently, end of 2019, acquired uh, Triple Play. So now the two companies are sister companies, and we are working uh, together, and we are growing the platform, as uh, we have seen in the previous uh, presentation, so that we can have a global uh, solution, Triple Play and OneLand together. For now, I will introduce here the OneLand solution as it is right now. Uh, a bit the same uh, diagram uh, picture as we saw before, but this one is specific to one and alone. Uh, so in terms of product, we have about 100,000 uh, product already shipped. These are some of the one and customers. So you can find some that were in the previous presentation. Uh, we have quite a lot of customer in uh, retail corporation educations. Uh, you can see here some name you probably know. Chemist Warehouse is one of our biggest company in terms of uh, network over 2,000 uh, players uh, in Australia. Um, you may uh, see uh, as well some uh, cooperation. We do have some in the Philippines. I don't know where we are here. The page is a bit too small. Uh, but we have some insurance company in, uh, in the Philippines using one land with uh, quite a wide uh, number of, um, of players. Now, if I go a bit uh, into some uh, uh, introduction of the digital signage uh, itself. 
uh, we start here with some uh, cases just to answer a bit of a question. What is digital signage, what it is used for? So here is a case in uh, education. This is a university in uh, Scotland, in UK. Uh, and this is a very big uh, project for, uh, for us with uh, several video wars. And this is also interesting because they have done quite good uh, utilization of the digital signage in their university. So what we can see here is that we have some feature walls uh, that are in the lobby where we have different type of content, a mix of content, some messages from the administrations, but also a lot of message which are a bit looks a bit less serious, so more attractive, more eye-catching uh, for the group of students uh, or uh, formerly students, uh, now people working in the industries, to be able to post some content. So it's almost a kind of uh, social media uh, share within the university. Then you have also some more practical uh, usage, such as a Wayfinder with a list of uh, events that are going uh, on in the, um, in the uni university at some point. If you look at the top right, you can see two dial. These are also some uh, live HTML uh, content that will refer to the solar energy which is produced. Uh, so to, go, to show the, this uh, feature of the um, university as well. Here we move uh, across the world to uh, New Zealand. Uh, this is a totally different uh, project. This is here in an uh, airport. And this is much, looks much uh, simple, but in fact is a very big project with uh, 51 screens uh, split in uh, three parts, each of them of uh, 17 screens. So these are driven by 4K players which are running in synchronization. Um, this is one of the biggest uh, in uh, so, um, South uh, Australia and uh, New Zealand. Here, something a bit new. This is something developed with uh, Hilton, the uh, hotel group. So it looks like uh, the content is running on the wooden panel. In fact, this is an LED which is behind the wooden panel. Uh, and this uh, content is uh, seen through the wooden panel, which have micro perforation. So it's just to, to have a um, screen, uh, a content which will be eye-catching because a bit unusual uh, for the visitors. Um, so th this is so something coming up, uh, interesting. Here, a bit more uh, classic content with a video wall. You can see a few um, screens playing in synchronization on the left. Uh, and on the right, you have also quite classic uh, application in a corporation, which is a wayfinder. Uh, you are going to Virgin Atlantic and you are looking for your meeting room. Then you use the touch screen uh, and you find your direction to that, uh, to that venue. Uh, so you can see even in corporation, you can have very different type of application, more uh, practical or more design and uh, almost customer experience. Here is also a corporation, a big corporation, uh, Dentsu, this uh, thing is in UK. Um, Dentsu is a Japanese corporation. And here you can see this usage of digital signage really to create an atmosphere in the wool lobby uh, of a uh, building with uh, content, which is here uh, for Christmas time. Um, and you can really notice here that the content be on the screen become part of a design of a lobby. So it means for the architect is interesting because they can just uh, change this content to change the design uh, the way the people will perceive. So this was a usage of um, screen playing in synchronization. Here is another one uh, in Dubai duty free. Uh, this is so the, the big airport uh, that you know and probably you have been transiting. Uh, this is one of the biggest projects uh, with uh, 100, uh, now is, we say 500, now we reach already 800 players. And you can see on the, this video that the players are playing in sync. So when the things change, it's not only changing on one screen, but all across all the, play, the display that you can see. The reason for this is that it is definitely more eye-catching, as you may uh, realize by just looking at this video. Uh, so this is, and if you look at it, it's only, um, it's not only digital signage on uh, LCD, but also on LED. So look at, have a look, we, we have a look now at the way we do that. When we 
organize a digital signage, basically you will have an NTB, which will be uh, which is uh, the player for one land, which will uh, develop a content, and you will access through the LAN. As we say, triple play, one land, all let you access the player through the LAN. Now, in many cases, you want to have not only one player, but uh, a few players. So you will create an architecture with a network of players. So this is what we call the subscribers. You will have as many as you want, and you will monitor all of this uh, through the headquarter, uh, the back office, where you will have uh, your access through the CMS, and you will prepare and preview your content. As we just saw uh, in the first presentation, the one land CMS is able to manage different type of uh, player or devices. The 4K content, either 4K video wall or 4K screen connected to a 4K player, HD in the same way, OPS, if you are familiar with it, when you can slot in the player inside the screen, like NEC, for example, and also the SOC uh, support, uh, SOC platform, be it a bright sign, we consider bright sign as SOC because it's very similar technology, bright sign, LG, or Samsung. Then the Reserva, and this we will come back uh, later when we go to the Reserva presentation. Uh, Reserva, in fact, for us is as well a Linux player and is also a digital signage player, besides being a room booking solution. Okay is playing on its own, so I'm a bit out of sync, sorry for that. So our CMS comes uh, in basically two different types, either physical appliance or VM. Physical appliance, we have two types, what we have uh, light, which is a cost-effective uh, CMS, which is used for small uh, deployment. You cannot uh, connect more than 25 players, while the PA can be um, extended to a few hundred or thousands. Uh, the VM will be installed uh, as a VM solution, VMware solution on your own server, so it can be on-premise. Uh, very likely, your customer will uh, use uh, their own server or uh, get a local server uh, as a service and install there. Why we are using uh, Linux? Well, you may have been using Windows as well, and you know that Windows will, is very annoying, always popping up with uh, error message and uh, Windows, precisely. Uh, so some picture on the left that you, probably you have seen also sometime when you take a flight or you go to a railway station and so on. Linux doesn't give you this kind of problem. Linux is extremely stable, uh, is uh, virus-free. And so in terms of uh, uptime for your content on the screen and ease, and ease of mind for your um, maintenance team is much better. Uh, so we decided to work, run on Linux and we have kept to that. Uh, and we still think this is the best solution. And we were happy to see that. So triple play when we started to work together made the same decision. They are also running on uh, Linux uh, for the same reason. Uh, so still as a user, you will never have to access Linux. It's totally in the background. Uh, and as a user, you will use your Windows or Macintosh. So the way uh, you will uh, organize your content, just to understand how you can build uh, the solution, is that just like when you watch TV at home, you can select from among different channels. We work the same way. So on your CMS, you will create different channels uh, and uh, with different contents. And you will, for each player, you will decide which channel it has to uh, subscribe or refer to. We call that subscribe. We call the player the subscribers. In one channel, you will have different uh, content, just like at the TV, on the TV, when you watch uh, CNBC, different time of the day, different days in the week, you will have different uh, content. So this is what we call the schedule. Uh, you may have a default schedule, playing most of the time, but you may have some different schedule that you can organize by the festivals or some specific schedule for, for the day or for the event today. Uh, each of these schedule will consist of what we call the layout, okay? So this is the, basically the architecture, but the channel, the schedule, and now the layout. The layout is where you will design and organize your content that will show on the screen. And so in one schedule, you can in the same way have different layouts that will play at different time of the day uh, or different dates uh, or different days in the week. Uh, very often you will uh, notice that you may have different content on Saturday, Sunday, uh, compared to Monday uh, to uh, to Friday. 
So here we come to the layout, and this is what you need uh, to understand. This is the way you will create a content. You have this kind of uh, very simple to understand, a kind of a page on which you will create what we call a zone. And each of the zone, you will have a content, uh, a playlist that will uh, be um, played from the top to the bottom. Now, to, to explain how it works, I'm going to show uh, directly on the CMS how you do this. So we, how we get into the CMS and create a new layout. And next, how we, we see what we have done. So here is uh, my laptop. I'm getting into the CMS, just getting through my browser. And I will be given my IP, the IP address of my CMS. Now I'm already in the one -line CMS. I enter with my ID and my password, and I am inside. So I don't need to install anything on my laptop. You can do that on your laptop and any, uh, anywhere. And you can do that remotely, obviously. Now, if I want to create a new layout, here I'm creating a layout for the demo of today. I can select the size of my layout. So here I just select uh, that I'm doing a landscape layout uh, in HD. And I get this canvas. So what we call the canvas is this page, which is now empty. And I will start to create some content in this uh, canvas. So I create the zone one by one. I can give them a name. I can select the type of media that I want to allow in each of these zones. And uh, I will access what we have here, which is what we call the playlist. So I will, uh, in this first zone, which I set as the background, the system automatically gives me a default uh, background. I will keep it to make it simple. Um, and I keep adding another zone. So now I have another zone that I will decide to be uh, to be for um, for the video, and I can adjust the position or the size of my my video zone. And as you can expect, the video zone probably my content will be sixteen by nine. So instead of doing manually, I can force the system to keep the ratio of my zone to 16 by 9. So now when I move, I enlarge my zone, it will always keep a ratio of 16 by 9, uh, whatever is the, whatever the size I set. This helps to get it done faster. Now, I am in this uh, video zone. Automatically, the system will give me a default uh, content, but this is not the one I want. And now I'm going to my own computer. This is the windows in my computer, and I just drag and drop from my computer to the playlist uh, this uh, video. So this is something which is extremely simple. Uh, not many digital signage allow you to be so simple to add uh, content on the playlist. So this basically you can understand, you don't need much training for the people. This is very straightforward. It's just like you attach a, a file to an email almost. Now I go here to con and I continue to create my content. Uh, I will add another zone. This one, I will uh, set it as a text zone. I want to have some welcome message showing on my screen. So here I have an access to a, a box where I have a given a, a default content. So I key now the content I want to show. Uh, welcome to the one -land, uh, webinar. And uh, I will be able to decide the style. A style will tell me how the content will, the text will show on the screen, whether it will be still or it will be moving. And moving, is it from the right to left or bottom to top? Uh, so for this one, let's say I select bottom to top, I can select the speed, can select the font, I change the size. Then I can select the color, both the color of my text, I pick a white color and the color of this zone itself, the, the background of this zone, I want to make it transparent. So I have a feeling that my text is scrolling over the, the, my first image, which is in the background zone. Well, I'm done. This is uh, the way I will set my text, very simple. And I continue, put another zone. Uh, this zone, I just put it below here. And for this zone, let's imagine I want to set image. Uh, so I need to select the media as a picture uh, image here, and I don't need, I don't want to put text there, so I can remove text. It uh, will allow me to make some mistake and put the content in the wrong place. Here I go to the um, playlist of my um, image uh, zone. I remove a picture that was given as uh, default content by the system, and the same way I go back to my own computer and I add 
some uh, pictures from my laptop. So I can pick two of them. OK, I drop one by one. I could drop both at the same time. And once I have my picture there, they're already loaded in the CMS. You can see I can also arrange um, the order if I want. So now we have done this simple content over just a few minutes. Uh, and I want to uh, start to use it. So here I'm going to the channel page in my CMS. When I publish this, the system tells me I need to publish. When I publish my content, it means it will be sent to all the players which are looking at this channel. You remember the channel? So then all the players which are connected to this channel, Demo 2020, will start to receive this content and will start to play it. Now, I don't want to go back to those displays. Maybe they are not nearby. I want to see on my own computer so I can have a preview player on my own computer. I press this button and it, you see it will open a page, uh, a window rather, uh, where I will start to see the content playing on my own computer. Okay, So here I have a video that I loaded, the text that we just typed, and the picture in the slideshow, uh, which are showing below. So you see that by just doing this content, I can very quickly uh, show it uh, on my uh, own computer and, uh, and observe how it plays and change if I need. So now I, we, I invite you to go to this uh, another uh, content here, a bit, uh, a bit more sophisticated. Uh, here you can see that the, the content uh, is uh, looking a bit more professional. Uh, and especially if you look at it, and if you are a bit familiar with digital signage, you will notice that the text uh, seems to be uh, fading in and fading out. So how do we do this? This is all related to transparency. That the content that is on the right, in fact, I have done it the way it shows here on the left. You have a zone, as you can imagine, but there is another zone on top of it, which we call the foreground. I created another zone in which I put this content, which is a PNG file. Okay, This PNG file has transparency. So in fact, the frame and the jar that you have uh, on, the, um, on the picture here on the layout are in front of the rest of the zone. So my text and my picture are playing behind, and I am seeing them through this. So by doing this, when you know a bit of uh, Photoshop or this type of uh, art uh, design, you can imagine that you can do very nice things because you can just create some tr uh, artwork with some transparency that you will put in front. Uh, this is something that is interesting to show to a designer uh, among your customer because they will like it. Another feature interesting to know is the web page integration. You may have some content that are available on the network, like this uh, graph here. I can crop it uh, in my, in, I just go to the web page, I can crop it, and I paste the web uh, URL in, inside my HTML zone. And then it will bring this part of the page into my HTML zone on my layout. Okay. This way of doing is very good because it can help you to create a very low cost, because someone else is doing the content for you, a very low cost content on your own um, layout, on your own digital signage. And this will be always refresh because it's live content. It will be a refresh. Now, another feature that is interesting to uh, keep in mind as well for um, when we talk about the digital signage of one land is that we have developed what we call ad hoc users and rights and permission to allow you, to allow your end user to create as many users ID uh, as they want. So you can create some ID for users who have very, very restricted rights. Some people may have the right only to change the text in the uh, text zone, the welcome to one land. Uh, some other users may have only the option uh, and the freedom to change some content inside, uh, inside a folder of video or picture. And um, this is a way to share the work, which is very effective. Now, I am getting a little bit further in some of the features that we have developed uh, hearing from our key customer uh, over the time. For such content that the one here, I, I want to deploy this in my coffee house outlets uh, throughout my network. But I may have a lot of outlets. And maybe not all of the contents uh, have to be exactly the same. So I need to have what we call productivity features. Uh, this, uh, this is what we will uh, see in the, in the next slide, where I can uh, make the system 
create the different uh, content that will show on the screen versus the time versus the location automatically instead of having to add more workload to my team. So let's imagine in this case, I have three pictures here showing, and one of it is talking about the breakfast. But there is no point to talk about the breakfast in the afternoon. So I want to, to have this picture on the breakfast showing only in the morning. And this is only for Monday to Friday. How can I do that? In fact, in my playlist that you will see here, I can go in the setting uh, of this item, this picture item, specifically that item, and I can set some criteria regarding the time. And I can say this one will play only Monday to Friday, and I can say it will play from 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. So I can pick the, the time here. I could also put, pick some dates. If I want to be only in, uh, in the month of July, uh, I can have a mix of all this. Now, once I set this item in my playlist, I can see that in the playlist now I have a new icon showing up here, which is telling me there is a time validity activated there. And I can also see this uh, feature in this calendar view, you can see the first two items they play all the time in the calendar, but that one, the, the, the breakfast will show only during intervals, Monday, Friday, and only for a short time in the morning. You could change from here. Now, when I look at this content, uh, you can see on the playlist on the top right, there is this um, time validity, which is activated. If now, when I do this uh, check, this uh, record, the time was 8.40 a.m., so it was already over the 8.30 a.m., so the breakfast will not show. So what you see here in the screen is a playlist where you have three items, including the breakfast, but because the time is such that the breakfast should not play, it just doesn't play, and it will play automatically tomorrow uh, from uh, 6 to 8.30, okay? This is important. Now, another thing, a bit the same way, I have also the Wi-Fi, uh, to, talking, um, I have this uh, advert saying that I have free Wi-Fi for everyone. But maybe some of my shops, some of my outlets do not have a free Wi-Fi, so I don't want to show it. How I can do it? A bit the same thing. But this is not the time. This is related to whether you have Wi-Fi or not. So I will create a tag. Uh, I create my own tag, and I call it free Wi-Fi. Then the value will be either yes or no. It means that for each outlet where a coffee shop where I install this player, I will set the value whether it's yes or whether it's no. And in the same way, in my playlist here, I will go to my item, the free Wi-Fi picture, and I will be able, in the play criteria, just now we use the top, time validity, now we use the bottom, uh, conditional play, and I will select the rule, I will set the rule. I will say this item play only if free Wi-Fi equal yes, okay? So now my playlist still has the free items, but you can see there's a conditional play popping up now, free Wi-Fi equals yes. So if I am in an outlet, like on the left there, where the value is yes, you can see that on the screen, I will have my free content, including the free Wi-Fi. But if I am in another outlet, that, like the one on the right, where the value is no in that player, you can say that the playlist will just skip the free Wi-Fi, okay? So you can understand that this is very productive because I don't need to create two playlists or two channels. I just prepare one playlist that I will send to all the player and the player will do the job, okay? Very interesting uh, feature to remember. Now. Another uh, feature I like to introduce here is the resolution that you can set for your canvas and for your output. We know that the LED is something, is a type of display that is increasingly in use. So when I create a content uh, for LED, it's unlikely to be a 16 by 9. So I can create the custom size, like for example here, 3840, which is a 4K length, but only 418 height. And you can see below when I create my zone, the zone will have also the same form ratio. So you can create your canvas size and your output of player according to your LED. This sounds simple, but not many digital signage uh, solutions are able to do that. So remember that. Uh, now, we, I mentioned about the synchronization across players. You remember, we saw that in the uh, Dubai Duty Free uh, video just now. Just to explain to you how we do that. Then, 
in each of the playlists, you will have a, the items and you will set all your NTPs to the NTP, the NTP server. I'm sure you know that. Now, in each of the playlists, you will add uh, what we call a rendezvous point, which is a, a kind of trigger at the beginning of a loop. And you will have your system like here, the NTP will make sure that all the players will automatically restart playing the content from the top of the loop. It might be the same content or different content, but they are playing in sync because when you have different form ratio, they are different. Okay, so that was a bit quick and maybe a bit uh, dense uh, presentation because I wanted to uh, just go to the key uh, features. Um, that's it for the um, digital signage part. Later, we will have a session uh, on the, uh, on uh, reserve the room booking. I just close this one. Go back here. Uh, do you have any question at this um, at this stage? Any questions? Yep. Any question? Yes, uh, so we in the uh, Philippines, we work with uh, iConnect. So I'm uh, always happy, obviously, to uh, answer the technical questions. Uh, but uh, the iConnect team will be the, your first point of contact. Uh, and they, they will, I'm sure they will be happy to answer a lot of questions. In terms of uh, delivery, supply of a solution, yes, the, uh, all this solution will be deliver, uh, supplied to you via iConnect. Um, and also uh, supported technically in terms of uh, product support. So, if there is no more question, I will. If there is no more question, I will go to the reservoir part. So, reservoir is on the meeting room signage. Um, so, this is a solution which is under one line, uh, but with a different brand name that we call uh, reservoir. This is a solution that I'm sure you will see uh, high interest right now in the uh, Philippines, like we see everywhere. It's clear that uh, everyone is understanding that uh, the, the way we behave, the way we work together, we collaborate, uh, it will be changing. Uh, and this means that meeting rooms or rooms where you can just sit with your laptop or your mobile phone and have a video call will be in more demand. So this system, what does it do? Well, basically it will book, help you to book the rooms. It will also show on the screen uh, the plan of your booking for that room and status, whether the room is available or not, with a color coding. And this is uh, on the device uh, itself. Then it will allow you, because this is a touch screen, it will allow you to get into this interface and to look for a room. So you may use this device to book for this room for later. Uh, or for now, if it's available, but you may also use that device for another room. 
Uh, so globally, it will allow you, this solution will allow you to optimize the usage of your room. Because maybe by trying to book the room here, you will realize there is a room on the third floor that you forgot about, uh, which is viable now. So you may, uh, by being at the first floor and trying to get a room, you, you may know that you can go the third floor to get the room. So it's globally optimized the usage of the room. At the same time, we also know that it's very disappointing to book a room because you want to have a high uh, video conferencing. You start to install and you realize the camera is not working or the screen is not working. So this is uh, reporting on the um, IT appliances uh, issue and the reservoir will allow you to make a report. We will see that later. Basically, these are the rules. Now, one thing important to understand is that Reserva will link to your existing uh, platform. You might be using 365, Exchange, or Google Calendar, and we are not creating a new uh, proprietary calendar. You will use your existing one. Uh, so it's very easy to install because basically you have your room already created in your platform. And it means it's also very easy for your team to understand they don't. They might not even need to change their, the way they work. Uh, they will keep uh, booking the room over 365. Then they will see the information on the screen, and they just have the advantage that they can also make some booking on the screen itself. But it's not an additional new solution. In terms of uh, setup, when you get your device uh, coming out of a box, uh, you basically just need to connect to Wi-Fi, to a network, and to the power. So you can connect with a power supply unit uh, that is delivered and Wi-Fi. This is one way. Or the power supply and your LAN cable, uh, if you prefer to, LAN, to use LAN rather than Wi-Fi. But if your LAN is also a PoE plus, not PoE, but PoE plus network, then you can just uh, use the LAN cable because we are uh, PoE plus compatible. Now, this is the way the, how the, the product looks like. You have a metal uh, bracket that will uh, be able to fix on the wall. Uh, and if you are on a glass um, wall, you will see that you can also fix it. This is the place where you can run your cable. So as you see, the cable can go from the top, bottom or from the top left or right. So basically, you can have a very clean uh, installation, uh, no matter what is your configuration. How it works? Well, pretty intuitive. When the uh, room sign is green, it's available. When it's red, it's occupied. You guess it. Now, what you can do on the screen, you can um, make a new booking here i can make a booking for that room and i can have either a simple page for now or i can have a calendar view when i can book uh, for later uh, and i can also extend or shorten uh, or end the meeting i am now now as we say you can have free room uh, find free room if i am trying to book a room but this room is busy i can use, still use that display and i can find available room in another, uh, in my pool of room, but uh, another room, maybe in another building or in another floor. And I can also make the booking for another time. And so this allows you the system to be used for the global uh, pool of room. Uh, so here the, I show on uh, the device itself how I can make a booking. This is, I make the booking for this room starting from now, and I just say the duration 15 minutes, I just book. And now my my meeting turns red because I just book it. I book it for 15 minutes. Okay, from uh, very simple. Now another uh, case. My meeting now is available. I want to make a booking, but not for this room, but maybe for another room because I want different size or different space. So I can do the same here, or I can also go for more options. If I want to book, maybe not right now, but at another time, I can select the date. Uh, and I can here have a calendar uh, and a time uh, access. So I can select for today or for another day when I book. So right now what I have done is I have booked a room, but in another meeting room. And um, here I, my meeting is uh, booked and I want to uh, change the duration. My meeting was booked till 4.30. I can reduce or I can extend. If I extend, the system will check that it doesn't conflict with another existing meeting later. I can also 
if I, my meeting ended up earlier than expected, than I planned, I can also be considerate for others and I can just use the display to say, okay, I end my meeting. By doing this, the meeting becomes available again. So if someone else in the company is looking for a meeting, my room now shows us available. Now, here we are um, showing how you can report failure. Remember, we just discussed that. So for example, I noticed that the display is damaged in my system. In, my, in this room, I use this interface, then I will say the, the connector of my display is uh, defective. When I do this, it will show the icon. It will also send a message to the IT maintenance department, so the people will know that someone has reported this failure. And the system is also pretty smart. It will also inform the host of meeting in that same room that are uh, being planned for later today or this afternoon. So these people will know that there is a uh, failure um, reported in that room. Okay, so when we access, um, wh when we use the room, one of the key thing is that many people, uh, many companies will notice that people will book a room, but they may not use it. So here, what we offer is a system that we call the check-in is to reconfirm a meeting. So when I have made uh, a booking for uh, one room, I may request that the people in that, uh, that who did this meeting will need to uh, press a button, the confirm button, uh, to confirm that they are using the room. If they don't do that, the room will automatically be released. What This is what we consider a no-show. Okay, uh, so this you can understand that if I make a booking in that room, but for two hours, but I end up not using it after maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you decide, then the, since nobody has checked in, the room will automatically be released for the, ne for the next one and a half hour or more. So it means that I will increase the availability globally of my rooms. And this management of a no-show is really very, very important uh, for, the, for the companies because there is a lot of wastage of meeting room because of no-show. Now, we can see just now that we are using the display to uh, do uh, extend, create new meetings, extend or confirm. You can decide whether anyone can do it or you want to restrict. And it, when you restrict, you can restrict either by ID or by NFC card. Uh, if you are um, you have an NFC card, uh, for example, to enter your office, then you might be able to use that LFC card with LDAP uh, to link and identify on the device. So it means that, for example, if I have a meeting and I require that the people will have to, uh, to check in, only people who are invited in the meeting can check in, not, not other people, so to avoid the mistake. Okay, so what we have seen so far is all related to room booking. Now, what I just uh, show here is that, as we mentioned, if you remember a bit earlier, is that the digital si the, this uh, device is also a digital signage device uh, because it's running on Linux uh, and it is also similar to what we call NTB. It can, in fact, have four zones, not only one. So you can also use this device to show other contents, like we see here, content like uh, information for the visitors to the meeting room, but also general information, uh, corporate information, um, which makes the system multi-purpose. And people like, when they spend the money, they can use it for different things. Now, as we just say, our reservoir solution is also part of the OneLand solution. So OneLand is the digital signage. So it means that we can also link our reservoir solution to the digital signage, to NTB, and you can play on the screen in a full zone, full screen or in a one zone in a multi-zone uh, display. You can show also what we call a summary. So instead of having the information just related to one room, you can have a, the information related to a few rooms like a table like this, that will tell you what are the events, at what time, in which room. And, and this is live, exactly like what you have on a single screen. This is live and will be uh, uh, getting the information from exactly the same database. Okay. Now, last part is what we added recently on the Reserva solution, which we call Reserva Analytics. Analytics is a software solution, a web-based solution that will um, allow you to collect data that's from the, the solution that we just uh, developed 
and will allow you to create some uh, graphs and uh, statistic because you want to understand what is the situation with the usage of your meeting room and understand what you can do to improve uh, the usage of your meeting room within your organization. Maybe also understand the behavior of some people and uh, suggest the change. The first part of it is uh, room utilization. Typically in your pool of room, which are the room that are used most often or which are used very seldom. Then you can also measure the, and have a graph um, showing the usage versus the time from the morning to the afternoon. Uh, and so, for example, you can see at 3 p.m. in this graph, the room are very busy, but at 5, not so busy. By looking at this, you can suggest, let all the people know that if they have problem getting a room at 3 p.m., yes, because this is the peak hours, but they may also consider taking meeting before or after, because then there are many more rooms available. And you can do the same uh, analysis over a year. This can be interesting for the management to understand whether there is a trend during some months of a year. The, the room are in very high demand, so they need to understand what they have to do to cope with this. Another part of uh, analy analytics is on the user behavior. User behavior is basically who are the guys of the departments uh, who are um, making using most of the room uh, spending most of the time um, in the meeting rooms or the less and also the sh no show you remember we talk about this how many hours of meeting room usage have been released because this system has allowed to manage the no show how many times people booked the room and didn't go and because of the thanks to the reserve solution then this meeting has been uh, released. This is interesting uh, statistic. The third part is related to the resource. Just now what we saw, the mobile the display is broken, uh, video conferencing is not running. Uh, so you can also see this uh, statistic by type of defect. The screen is very often uh, in, in, um, broke down or by room. And also you can see by uh, people or departments uh, reporting this. So how this works? This is a solution which is a service uh, offered as a service and is running to get through the same um, solution, what we call Reserva Connection Manager, which you will have installed on your server uh, to run the Reserva signs in the first place. The data are continuously recorded and made available and you will get this information just by going through your browser with your ID and you will get all the dashboard. Uh, so you can customize the dashboard because first you may have your own ID on how you want to say by week, by day, by month, by quarter and so on or from what time to what, from what day to what date. And also very important by type of rooms, whether you want to see a single room, a statistic for a single room or all rooms, or maybe a group of rooms. You may want to see all over Philippines or just in uh, Luzon or just in Manila or just in what building or in what floor in uh, that building. And you can also create some tags. So you can say, I want to analyze all my VC room or all my training rooms as different group of rooms because they, they may have different uh, uh, situation. So you can customize very much the way your dashboard will be created. Of course, our solution Reserva Analytics will work with uh, the new uh, Reserva Edge that I have uh, introduced just before, but it can work also with a bigger one, the 15 and the 21 uh, inches, and it can also run with the older one. Uh, we have in the Philippines some uh, install base already, the solution uh, can also run uh, um, with um, uh, the uh, earlier generation of Reserva. And in fact, it can even connect, uh, it can even manage rooms where you don't have any Reserva. So of course, if you don't have any Reserva, you will get the data only from 365 or Google Exchange. So you will not have all the data, you will not have a no-show and you will not have a report, but you will still be able to uh, see uh, the statistic on the usage of your room. How to buy? pretty easy, it's just a license fee per year and per room. So you can add uh, more room over time, um, either because you uh, you know that these rooms now are in more, uh, more demand, so you want to analyze more of them, uh, or the other way around. In some cases, you may want to analyze more room and then decide based on the usage, which one you want to install uh, a reserve sign. Uh, so these are very much working together with a sign, 
still uh, can be quite flexible in the way you deploy. Whenever we have a customer uh, starting to use our reservoir sign, we are happy to offer a trial uh, offer for uh, using uh, analytics over a few months uh, on that uh, network and then have uh, experience on this uh, dashboard. I think this is about it for what I intended to introduce on the um, reservoir solution. So I'm coming back here and, and again up to questions if you have any question on the reservoir, the way it works. Or even if you have some question back to the digital signage, of course, also happy to answer this. Um, so far, uh, thank you so much for your participation and if you require any uh, information regarding on triple play and one lens solution, uh, feel free to contact uh, myself and Bruno and also I connect him. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you and stay safe. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.